All right, I'm not sure if, I don't remember if I've shown this before or not, but since I have a hammer, I've been using it to set my work offsets, and I use, for mill turning, I use work offsets. So this will be G56 and this will be G57. Maybe there's a way to set it up as a tool, but since it changes, I'd have to go in and change the tool. Uh, anyway, this is how I do it right now. I'm not setting Z height with it right now, so I'm just going to set the uh, X and Y on the tools. The Z, I reference the tool to uh, the spindle. So for me, it helps if I take a flashlight and I light up the background, then when I get down here and I eyeball through here, I've got a bright background to see. And there's the shuttle giving a really nice fine control down. I'm eyeballing that sucker. I want to make sure it's pretty darn close to the center. I'm, I'm lined up this way, and it's a whole lot easier for me to line that up visually and get really close uh, in the X. Trying to get over here and do it on the Y. Well, i got to use a mirror or something, man. I can't climb up, don't want to climb up in the machine to try to do that. So I get the X. Okay. Then I'm going to move that back. That is right in the middle of the zero. Okay. Won't look at like it to you guys. And it's just a gnat's ass to the right. Certainly close enough for now. Anyway, that should give me my Y. Now I can come back and double check it when I know where my X is, because then I can come back exactly to the middle. Hey, you know, it started, this is a mock standard mill. I just happen to like it better for mill turning. Works real nice for me. It's about 75 bucks, I think. Uh, anyway, I want to come over here. It's in G54. I want to put it on G56. That's the tool I'm reading. So I'm going to zero the Y for now. I can come back and double check it. Uh, but that zeroes the Y. So next we'll work on the X. I'm not going to deal with the Z just yet. Okay, so now my Y is extremely close to the middle there. Now I can move my X axis. And if I do want to do fine adjustments, I uh, use the shuttle. I have had some issues with it hanging up, though. Okay, and I can see that's not right at the apex of that turn. And I'm sure the difference we're talking about is in tenths, maybe. It's not necessarily uh, this critical. Oops, going the wrong way. I watch uh, John Saunders move his around, and it's like, holy crap, dude, man. I mean, he just flies between the axes. axes. And I know I've got some backlash in this machine, so I have a tendency to do it as if it was a manual mill. And I always come at it from the same direction. Now, I like that. If you really want to find the, the apex of those two crowns coming together, the tangent point, I can now move the Z up and down and watch and see if this peaks at a different spot. I had to look at the screen there to make sure my Z was actually moving. Okay, so that's dropping. And that was the uh, that was the spindle going up. Yeah, oh, there's a thou. Well, I, that's not a thou. That's uh, 0 0.01 millimeters. Jeez, yeah. Still going up. Looks like it's pretty much stopped. And yeah, then it'll end up going back down. Okay. So we're gonna call that good. Uh, and so now I'm gonna move the X back over and re-zero it. Right there. 
that says um 2.6 thou different so I was saying it was half thousands but it's not half thousands that was actually uh, two thousands difference interesting now that I know it's that much I guess I'm gonna take the time when I'm setting up the uh, offsets to, to do that okay so now I know X is right in the middle I can that won't necessarily put me right doing it that way so I do want to move the table off of it and then come back at it on the Y all right that's in the middle my Y says it's a nine tenths difference than it was I'm gonna go ahead and zero Y again and get rid of that nine tenths so my X and Y for G56 should be dialed in like I said I don't care about Z um, it's probably not a good idea to drag the carbide cutter across the hardened steel ball don't want to drag it against it rather than move the table around in X or Y to get away from it because basically I'd have to move Y well if I move Y the wrong direction accidentally touch the wrong button I'm gonna snap this tip off so for me I just physically pull it away <laughs> raise the Z where it's safe and that saves me some potential risk there. I should probably go through and do a video of this uh, later somebody else did one a uh, lock cracker I think Ah, sorry if I'm wrong, but uh, I think it was Lockcracker. If it wasn't him, it was uh, Level 3 RC, but I think it was Lockcracker. Anyway, if, if you bump this thing, you get it in a position where you're not coming back to zero, okay? The same way you adjust co concentricity here, X and Y and everything with the, with the Allen screws around the top to get that to spin perfectly true, these two here will center this up and down the same way. Loosen one, tighten the other kind of thing. Same, same way you got to do it in here, just like a four-jaw chuck. Let's move over and do the other one here.